I'm Elizabeth Ross from the Queensland Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation at the University of Queensland in Australia. Today I'm going to talk about the application of nanopore sequencing uh, to animal agriculture and some work that we've been doing applying nanopore to look at really economically important traits that are also important for welfare. Cattle are both a nutritious and delicious food source for humans. They are able to do something really important, which is to convert low quality forage into high quality meat and milk for human consumption. And they were originally domesticated from aurochs. This here is a picture of a skeleton of an auroch and at the shoulder, it stood almost two meters tall. So they were quite large. The thing I'd like to draw your attention to is that they were rather formidable with their very large horns on their head. Um, and of course, today, if we look at domesticated cattle, uh, that trait is still there. The horns on cattle are dangerous both to the handlers, but also to other cattle because they can uh, damage each other and cause quite severe injuries. That's led to an industry practice that's known as dehorning, which is the physical removal of horns from the animal's head while it's still quite young. And it is a um, problem from a welfare, welfare perspective because the animals um, do feel a lot of pain when this procedure is happening. But it's very important because they can really hurt each other quite severely if the horns are left in place. Something that's very notable is that there is a natural genetic mutation that confers the lack of horns. And so what you have is these animals that um, phenotypically just don't grow horns and they're termed polled animals. The polled allele is located on chromosome one and it's known in, other, in many breeds of cattle to be a copy number variant. So the most common version of the pole allele, which is called the Celtic allele, uh, is a 212 base pair duplication and a very small deletion next to it. The problem, of course, is that when we investigate even these fairly small structural variants using short read technology, we're not able to get reads that fully span the mutation and therefore our ability to directly infer the presence or absence of the same version of the pole allele in a particular population is quite limited when we're using short read technology. So I wanted to talk to you today, today about our first Oxford nanopore experiment. And this experiment was run largely by a student in our lab called Harrison Lamb. And uh, what we did was we examined the pole allele in Australian Brahmin cattle. And what Harrison did is he took genetic material from some homozygous pole animals. There were four animals that were homozygous pole, three heterozygous animals, and then four horned animals. And we examined the hypothesis that the Celtic allele would be segregating in this population. And we wanted to know, can we determine the causal mutation of the pole allele in Australian Brahmin cattle using nanopore sequencing? So Harrison took these three different groups of animals that were, and their genotype had been determined by parentage assessment. Um, and he extracted DNA from commercially purchased semen from each of these groups. And for each bull, he ran one min-iron flow cell and collected data on them. And then he analyzed this data um, using Minimap um, and some dot plots to look at what structural variants were present near the known pole locus. And what we could see very clearly at the pole locus is that in the case of the homozygous pole uh, bulls, or both copies of the duplication were present. And you can see this in the gray alignments by the lack of any deleted regions. 
In the heterozygous animals, you can clearly see that there is a mixture of both uh, reads with one copy and reads with two copy of the duplicated region. And additionally, you can see that that ten, small 10 base pair deletion um, just up the top there. Furthermore, in the homozygous pole animals, you can see that all animals are missing one of the duplicated copies. And it's important to note that even though not all of these deletions line up, because of the way that um, reads are mapped to a genome, there's a 50% chance that either one of those two copies is going to come up as the deleted version. So all of the reads from the horn animal support that this there's only one copy of the duplicated region. And based on the structure of this copy number variant, there are different scenarios for what we would expect if we compare two horn or two pole reads. And what we see when we actually align the raw nanopore reads to the reference database is that compared to the reference um, genome of cattle, you can see that the pole alleles display this duplication, and you can even see the very small deletion there in the dot plot, giving us very strong direct evidence that this is the Celtic allele that is segregating in this population. And importantly, these reads span the whole region, so we don't have to infer anything um, about whether or not, for example, the deletion and the duplication are in cis or trans. And again, if we look at the proportion of reads in this location, we can see that for the two homozygote animals, they are only represented by uh, their associated allele. And the heterozygous animals have very close to a 50% proportion of horned and pole reads. So that was our first endeavor into the world of nanopore. And from then to now, we've actually come quite a long way. What you can see is that this is one of the original runs that Harrison did. And you can see that we had very low poor occupancy. But with a lot of op optimization, we're getting much better poor occupancy. And this is a fairly recent run that we did on a mini flow cell, where you can see that we're using almost all of the available pores. And we're reloading the flow cell several times throughout the run. And this particular flow cell gave us 40 gig of data output. So we're quite happy with the reads that we're getting now. And as we've sort of progressed, we have increased, this is our average yield from each minion flow cell. We've increased that quite substantially. And we're at the point now where we are fairly confidently able to obtain almost tenfold coverage for each animal because the cattle genome is the same size as the human genome. Um, and tenfold coverage gives us really good uh, confidence that we're going to be able to accurately genotype known variants, but also to discover new variants. So I'd just like to thank Harrison Lamb, who did this poll work, but also Lone Nguyen, who optimized our mid iron runs, Professor Ben Hayes, who had the vision to start using nanopore in our group, and Dr. Burns, Dr. Lyons, and the Australian Farm and Breeders Association. I'd like to thank you all for listening to this talk, and if you have any questions, I'll reply to them as soon as I can. Thank you.